This video is going to talk about the median of a triangle and how we can construct one. Of the four special segments that we're working on in this current project and current uh, assignment, uh, the median is going to be the easiest to construct. It really involves uh, one measurement exactly and a ruler. No protractor needed here. Uh, the median, very simply, is going to connect two parts of your triangle. It's going to connect the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. And that's it. So you do have to construct your midpoints, which you'll have to use your ruler for. But then once those midpoints are constructed, you're just going to connect the midpoint to the vertex, and that is going to be your median. So we're going to go back to the same triangle that we've been working with. And once again, I'm going to need to measure my midpoints. Use whichever side is going to give you the best measurement to uh, cut it in half. We've done this one on the perpendicular bisector video and we've determined that that is nine inches approximately, give or take a few uh, eighths of an inch or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and put my midpoint at the four and a half mark, okay? All the median is, is going to connect that to the opposite vertex, and that's it. So I'm going to take my ruler now, and I'm going to put my pen right there. And again, you should be using pencil for this first. I, in case you make a mistake, you're able to erase. So, if I draw this through, that's going to be my first median right here. Now, you might say to yourself, well, wait a second, Mr. Figure, that looks like a perpendicular bisector because it's perpendicular. And again, that is something that we need to talk about once we've learned all four of these segments. But for right now, uh, medians do not have to be perpendicular, and they will not be, as you will see with these other ones that I'm going to create right now. So if I go to this side, let's see if I got a good measurement here. So it looks like we have, I'm going to try the inches side. I feel like the inches is going to be a better one. Uh, let's see, that is going to be seven. So that's much better. So seven, half of that is three and a half. So that was a case where the inches actually made more sense to use. So let's try to connect it. It's going to be hard to see it all on the same screen. But I have my midpoint right here. I have my opposite vertex up there. So I'm going to now just connect those with each other. And this will show you right away that this does not have to be perpendicular at all. So I'm connecting the midpoint to the vertex. And I'm going to do that for my last one as well. And as you're starting to get the hint here as we do this, that all of these segments that we're learning all seem to be meeting in the same place when I draw them. So if I turn my triangle back around, here I have all my medians drawn, midpoint to vertex, midpoint to vertex, and midpoint to vertex. They all are meeting in the same place once again. The name for this particular point of concurrency, remember that's the term that we use to recognize when three or more lines intersect at the exact same place. We're going to go ahead and give this a name, and the name of this is called the centroid. And we'll be, after this project, exploring why it's called the centroid. And we're going to leave it as simple as that for now. There is definitely some more exploration to why this particular point of concurrency is important, but we're going to save that uh, for when you're finished the project.